Hello and welcome back to part 4 of this series. In the last part I showed you how to make a material for this robot we made and today we are going to be baking this and adding some stickers on it. Uh, since the last video I have added in this bump texture with a bevel to add in a really soft edge. You can see the difference right here probably. So this is without, this is with, it just adds that bevel uh, from a distance that you can see and we are going to be baking it as well. So if you're following along with this uh, tutorial series, make sure you add this bump and bevel as well. But of course, this model will be available on my monthly support comrades. So you can uh, just look at it there. So I will keep that material right here. So for the uh, textures, uh, the first thing we need to do is UV unwrap this guy. And we are going to be doing that. But first I want to show you why it's important that we texture instead of actually using the material. So as you can see here, we have our we have our nicely rendered material. But if we hit play on our walk cycle, you can start to notice the rust patterns are just flickering out of place. The noise texture actually uses the global coordinates instead of the local generated coordinates. So that way the noise will always be in the same place uh, globally, but not on the model. So we need to find a nice frame where everything looks like we want it to, and then just bake that to the texture so we can use it. So the first thing we want to do is just open up this side panel and make this a UV editor. And if we now go into edit mode and select everything, we can see this mess of UVs, which is because we never actually touched the UV since we've modeled this, which is understandable. Sometimes you don't have to. If this is going to be everything you're going to make, you can just make a nice render like this and it will all be fine. But for what we're going to be doing, we need to actually uh, UV unwrap this. So one of these ways you can do it is just hit U and then unwrap or uh, U and smart UV project I mean. And as you can see it's all really neatly packed up. But some of these things just aren't uh, that useful. Uh, like this part is stretched and here we are missing a face. And here is a big hole in the UV. Here it's overlapping. So this really isn't the best way to do this. A better way of doing things is to unwrap this uh, like one by one. So we can unwrap this part and then look at any uh, things we can fix. So something like uh, adding this over here. We are going to be making some seams. So the program knows where we need to make a cut and where it can unfold every geometry into a 2D plane, which is the UV editor. Because the UV is pretty much just the um, flat representation of a 3D model. So normally if you were to get one of those cutout papers of a cube, it will look something like this. This might be really familiar to some of you, and that is because this is the uh, 2D representation of a cube. Uh, but now we need to make a 2D representation of this really complex object. And to do that, we are basically going to be telling the program where we want our uh, creases to be. So we can hit Alt and then left click on a side like this on the top and then just select the whole outer face and then right click and mark this as a seam. Now it will become red and as you can see everything is together right here because we've added a seam. And now we just need to do that for everything. Uh, make these sides as well. If the sides are a seam, it can be easily just made a 2D. So mark this as a seam. And let's just see what happens if we select this and UV unwrap it. So right now in the UV editor of the whole object, this is what it looks like. It's really far apart and it could just be right next to this part. So U and Smart UV Project. And as you can see, it's all neatly packed to the side of this. So we can go back into solid mode and just do everything we need to do. So something like this, we could make flat by just creasing these parts. So if we look at these grades, we can see that they're pretty scattered around and that's not really ideal. And that's not really ideal. So we can just UV project this and it's perfect now. And we can scale it in and move it to the side. Then we can take a different part like this and UV project this, scale it in, and make sure to keep these small parts pretty small. And sooner or later, you'll have a nice UV map. So I'll do that real quick and I'll come back when I'm done. Uh, don't worry, there isn't much to it. If you just follow along with what I just did, you can probably do this uh, really simply. So just uh, take something like this, smart UV project, and move it to the side. 
So I'll do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so now I've unwrapped everything in my mesh and we can start putting all these parts together now. So just moving them closer, but not too close so they don't touch something like this. And just make sure it all fits in the middle here. Uh, unimportant parts like this one, this is the grates. You can just keep pretty small, but other things that are big, you can still keep big. The bigger it is, the more detail it has. So as you can see, this is my UV map and I actually had some space left over, which probably isn't that good of a sign. I probably could have added more detail uh, to one of the parts, but I think this is a fine. It works fine. You can also mess with this later. But for now, this is uh, much better than what we had before. By no means am I saying this is perfect, but this is just the best you're going to be getting. Uh, for me at least, since UV unwrapping is not really um, something I like. So now that we're finally done with the UV unwrapping, which is the uh, difficult part, we can start to uh, texture this. So first we are going to be needing to bake this texture to the mesh. So to do that, we can go over to our material and add in a image texture, make a new one and set the resolution to something like a 4K texture. Call this robot underscore albedo. Make sure this is selected. So you make sure you have the out outline and then make sure you have your object selected with the outline. Go over to the render properties, scroll down to bake, go over to the diffuse and deselect direct and indirect and then click bake. If you have more materials like me, you can copy this over to the other material and just paste it in. Wait for this to bake and you'll have your 4K texture ready to go. So now the bake is finished, so we can take a look at the bake. So the problem I was having before seems to just be a random glitch where my bake uh, stopped working in between. Uh, so I don't know why that happens, but of course we need uh, more maps on this so we can duplicate this and then hit the X here and make a new one Call this robot uh, underscore roughness and make this and bake this as well. So copy this over to your screen, paste it in and have that selected of course, have everything selected to the roughness, go back into the bake panel and change this from diffuse to roughness and hit bake. And we're basically going to be doing this for every single thing we want. So the next thing will be our uh, normal map. And if you want, you can do the metallic, but since we don't change this uh, procedurally, you can also just make a 0.7 uh, metallic mask if you want. So I'll see you when I have done this for every single uh, texture I need. So only the normal after this, and then we can see what we can do with it later. If you are doing this on a PC that is prone to crash, uh, it's really recommended that you save these images once they uh, are done. So now that we have all our things uh, nicely baked, we can use these as textures. So of course, some of you might have noticed that the screen is actually in the texture. So if you go back to the uh, normal, the normal albedo texture, we can see it's just black. This just to showcase you what it could look like. In the next video, we'll be going over adding character to your character, of course. 
so adding expressions and some life to it and uh, that will be in the next video but for now i just wanted to show you how to texture this so bake everything and the next thing we are going to do is adding in some stickers so the first thing we need to do is go into google and try to find some stickers so you can go over to textures.com and what you'll get is a sticker set which you can use the sticker set is pretty much uh, perfect we can just download this and save it on our pc then over in blender we can go over to the texture paint tab right here and then in the brush we want to add in a texture and then go over to the texture properties and open your texture that you just downloaded go back to the properties and set this to stencil so you can move it right here and what we're going to do is just zoom in and then draw over the sticker we want to use and now our sticker will be on our texture as you can see right here and you can do this with a lot of different uh, sticker sets and just add in the stickers you want to uh, move this you press right mouse button to rotate this control and right mouse button and to scale it shift and right mouse button you can change the size of your brush by pressing f And this is how you add stickers to your uh, model. We can go back to the layout and then you can see it rendered if we use the uh, texture, of course. And that's just how to add stickers in Blender. Uh, for me, I don't like to sticker bomb my uh, models. So what I'm going to do is just search for some industrial stickers instead. So I'm going to search for warning and then I'm going to find something like this. And then just do the same thing again. So we went from a procedural material to something we can add some stickers on, which is really neat in my opinion. If you really want, you could Photoshop this, take this into Photoshop and like change the saturation, maybe add in a chip out of this sticker, make it all teary and wary. But for me, this is uh, perfectly fine. And this will be it for this video. So today we learned how to bake some textures and add some stickers on it. And I hope you enjoyed. And in the next video we'll be going over how to add a personality to your characters. So I hope to see you then. Uh, goodbye.